Hey everybody, Scott Luton, Supply Chain Now. I'm here again, continue our coverage of Amazon Reshape 2025 as we continue. Uh, a lot of great conversations here in beautiful Seattle. And I'm joined by my new best friend, Amy Fong, partner at Everest Group. Amy, how you doing? I'm doing great. Good to uh, meet you here today. We've already talked a little bit about industry thing, learned a little bit more about your love of all things travel. We got a lot mm -hmm. to get into here. But I want to start on this travel piece mm -hmm. because I hear and talking with some of your friends and colleagues, you are on the move all the time. Is that right? I, uh, I travel a lot for work yeah. and I like to leverage that to travel a lot for play too. Okay. There's a lot of places to see in the world. It is. It yeah. is. And, yeah. it, and it gets smaller and smaller probably with every trip you take. But I hear you had an incredible trip to Morocco this year. I did. Tell I me about did. It. That was our, uh, our holiday slash New Year trip. I traveled a lot this year, but that's probably the one that stands out. Beautiful country, amazing. Um, we happen to have family there, so we were able to, to get a little bit more local flavor than right, usual. Right, right. Um, but I highly recommend it. There's there's different cities to go through, and you can take the train around, and completely different culture, but extremely hospitable and easy to get around. Okay. Uh, Great food. Well, let's Great go. Food. Let's book a ticket, and yeah, we'll yeah. Uh, head to Morocco check tomorrow. Out. Check it out. It's as easy to get to as Europe, and it's on the African continent, so you can check a continent off your 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 bingo card. Oh man, I love it. Um, all right, so uh, I want to talk. I want to get into a lot of topics here. We got a lot of innovation here, a lot of big themes mm -hmm. that are coming out, emerging from Reshape. But first, let's level set on what you do. So mm -hmm. tell us about um, your role and your focus at Everest Group. Sure. So. Uh, so Everest Group, for those who aren't familiar, I know some aren't, is a analyst firm. We cover tech and global services. Uh, so our, our heritage, 30 plus years old, our heritage is kind of covering the big uh, offshoring, IT services, BPO partners. Um, we also cover tech, a lot of the big tech, things like uh, AWS and cloud and Amazon business and uh, the other top, you know, 50 to 100 or 10,000 suppliers you might have in the, the tech <laughs> areas these days. Um, so my role is, uh, I actually lead our sourcing and vendor management okay. service line there. Um, I wear a bunch of hats, but the primary one is I work with uh, sourcing VMO leaders, category managers, people on the buy side. Um, I help them get market intelligence. I help them get pricing benchmarks, commercial hmm. insurance, you know, commercial assurance. Um, I also work with the tech providers, procure tech, so it's a lot of, a couple other hats I wear as well, but uh, buy side, sell side, tech, services, all of that. You got a whole hat rack, maybe two of rack. them. I got a hat rack, I got a hat rack. But I bet you're helping a lot of organizations get through um, some highly uncertain times. Exactly. Um, and, and we need Sherpas. Uh, mm -hmm. to navigate through this environment, huh? Sherpa is the right word. That used to be the name of our blog, actually. Really? <laughs> yes. Yeah, Everest, the mountain, Sherpas in blue shirts was the name of the blog. I, I think love that it. Actually, we might be bringing that back because it's it's appropriate for you these need days, to. You know, we need more Sherpas for <laughs> yeah, sure. Exactly. Um, okay. So now that we understand a little bit more about your role and your expertise and you know where you play a part in global business, uh, let's talk about some key takeaways from day one of Amazon Reshape. Mm -hmm. um, so what really stands out to you after a full day of programming here? Yeah, so I thought the, uh, I thought the keynote was really great today. Uh, they kind of wove in um, some examples of what's happening with customers, some of the new products, or some of the new, the new tech announcements that are happening in the tech. Um, they, they just kind of humanized the whole Amazon business experience. Um, it's interesting for me. I've been around for a while. I remember when Amazon business popped onto the scene. Well, I remember 15 years ago or 20 years ago when everybody said, I want an Amazon-like experience. <laughs> and then 10 years ago when Amazon was like, hey, we're doing this business thing. And uh, I was an advisor at the time and was like, to get it right, right? <laughs> and and seeing the announcements today and seeing some of how AI can, you know, personalize or businessize the experience. Right. Um, really interesting to see that go full circle. It is 10 years, as they said, of Amazon business. And um, I think that's I think that's a really big milestone yeah. for, for the tech. Yeah. Completely agree. And I loved uh, some of my favorite key takeaways today was hearing from the customers. Yes, right? always. From always. FinTech to uh, the hotel space, mm -hmm. um, to of course technology. 
Um, there were some great nuggets from yes. all those sessions here today, huh? There really were. There really were. Um, there was a session, uh, kind of more of a workshop round table on, on, you know, AI and to hear the practitioners kind of talk about where they are. Um, that has progressed so much, even, you know, in two or three years, but even six months, three mm -hmm. months, I've seen, you know, the, the clients I work with just progress immensely. And now it's, it's embedded and we see, you know, some of the announcements today around Rufus and right. you know, all of that. Super, super interesting, right? So, so uh, uh, speaking of that, it's a perfect segue. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come back to some of the trends in, you know, hang on a sec. Mm -hmm. Let's set the table with some trends. I mean, you, you got your finger on the pulse with a lot of procurement and sourcing leaders. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about the developments you've mentioned a couple of times in a second, but what do you see procurement and sourcing leaders um, fighting through, prioritizing? Mm -hmm. What are some big trends in this space? Yeah, I mean, procurement has always been, or sourcing of a function, has always been about, you know, getting more value for the company, which right. we, you know, comes out as savings often, but it's not just savings, it's more value overall. Um, doing more with less, right? How do we reduce the friction in the transactions? Often we start to look at like process costs, but we're really talking about customer experience, user experience, stakeholder experience. So those have been long-term growth trajectories. Now, with uh, with the ability to use AI, to right. use machine, machine learning, um, and, and Agentic as well to uh, a get rid of some of the, you know streamline some of those processes, right? Improve this customer experience, but also use all of the information and the data we have much better. Um, so I think the real trend right now is figuring that out, figuring out how to do that and yes. execute it. All the the AI and the agentic in the world is not going to solve your problems if you can't execute. Yes, and that's that's the real challenge. Uh, well said. Uh, what the, your priorities are, what the right tools are mm -hmm. to address the right problems, yeah. so that you can unlock the full impact. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And I think a lot of uh, organizations have a lot of uh, tech debt. We call it. PTSD actually, uh, you know, they have, they have process, they have skills, they have technical and data debt. Right, right. right. Um, I think I got the right I think you did. there, but I think you, you know, it. all across the board, right? Because it's not just that, hey, we bought uh, some suite 20 years ago and we can't get rid of it. Or, uh, you know, we don't have, we also don't have the right data. We don't have our data clean, but it's also like the skills and the change and right. the people part of it. That's really a challenge right now. And we're all working through that. And that's a big, uh, you know, what's old is new again. Uh, exactly. What's old is new again, and change management it is, is the top of that time. list. That's exactly, right. Exactly. Exactly. All right. So you've set the table very effectively in, in some of the trends um, mm -hmm. and some of the challenges facing, really global business, but certainly procurement and sourcing. I want to get um, you know, AI and use cases and, and some of the latest innovations there. Are certainly uh, a big takeaway here. Get some of your general observations when it comes to AI, and then I'm going to mm -hmm. ask you about the AI-driven announcements and tools that were released this week. Generally, sure. your take on how AI is impacting global supply chain? Yeah, so I think, I think um, AI, as I said, it's, it's helping us to make sense faster yep. of all the data in the supply chain, in your sourcing, you know, your supply base, uh, everything end to end. At the same time, it allows you to focus on the things that matter. Um, I think what's um, what's interesting there is that there's a lot of talk of like, let's take sourcing for instance, if we want to get a little more tactical, right? Yep. Is the RFP going to go away? It's all going to be autonomous sourcing. And, and yes, it, in some ways, uh, you know, Amazon business, if you're buying your supplies on Amazon business, you can kind of, you know, they've, somebody used the term today, uh, you know, everything is a reverse auction of 40, right? And that is certainly appropriate for some categories. Um, there's certainly other categories where rather than, uh, you know, automating the RFP or even doing RFPs, the more complex things like where some of the global services agreements that, that I work with, they're actually moving away from, you know, a big RFP to more direct negotiation, right. with external data to benchmark it and to, you know, get the terms right. And it's more about the relationship with those big strategic suppliers. So all of that sort of starts to bifurcate, trifurcate, you know, oh, even those more. Are big words. I know, right? Even there's quadrifurcate, if that's what, <laughs> um, you know, God. even more when you can sort of look at your spend, you always should have been categorizing and prioritizing, but really think about where you want to spend your time. Yes. Do you want to spend your time, 
you know, doing RFPs for a thousand different supply categories that are fairly commoditized? Probably not. There's great platforms, right? There's right. great tools we can use for that. And we can use the data to get the right price on a lot of the more mid to complex things. And then as we get to the more complex partnerships, the suppliers that we really want to drive a strategic change with, uh, that's where we spend the time. Yes. And I think that the sourcing leaders that get that and can help free up their teams, whether it's their business units, stakeholders, their IT partners, you know, those those teams' time to really focus on the big stuff uh, are the ones that are going to really find the value for their organizations. Amy, completely agree. And and I'm hearing the one of my favorite words, unleash. Unleash. When you unleash your <laughs> yes. team yes. to bring more yeah. value and get rid of some of the tedious stuff and some exactly. of the blocking and tackling that here in the golden age of supply chain tech or business tech even, we have the perfect opportunity to take that friction, those headaches, that manual work exactly. out of the equation. Exactly. And especially for your stakeholders, your users, your requisitioners right. internally. Like we all just want our jobs, we want the noisy stuff to be easy. Right. And that's, that's a bit of where Amazon Business fits in really well, I think. Yes, uh, a speaker earlier today called it drudgery. Mm -hmm. We need to get rid of all exactly. the drudgery we can. Yeah, no one wants to do that. That's no. not, those aren't the, you know, those same people can do a lot more strategic stuff. That's right. Uh, and that's a great segue because the good news is industry is rolling out innovations left and right to get rid of the drudgery. And we heard a lot of this week with some of the um, AI-driven tools that Amazon Business has mm -hmm. announced. Um, out of those five or six, it's a whole bevy of tools. What really stands out to you? Yeah, so there was some, uh, we were talking this morning and there was a bit in the keynote about um, some of the prioritization and, you know, I think of the guardrails. And I mentioned like when Amazon Business first came about 10 years ago, you know, it was yes. kind of like, do they even know how to take POs, <laughs> right? <laughs> and then at, at first they didn't. I mean, I, I think that fit got figured out early on, but now it's much more like we're going to, you know, we can, we can have, we are talking about gloves as an example, right? Um, you might have your approved products, but then you have, you know, exceptions to that, that different departments can have their preferred, right? And then, you know, there's there's much more embedded intuition in the AI that's suggesting things within not just your policy, but individual preferences. And yeah. right, it's taking all of that up a notch. So even your, your end users who are basically just shoppers, uh, they're getting a much more robust experience within the guardrails that you as an organization want to set or that the budget holder wants to set. Yeah. And that's actually a really big deal. It sounds sort of, someone said, isn't this sort of like inside the you know, kind of detailed stuff? I'm like, it's actually a huge deal. So it's very difficult to do. Yeah. You know, one of the uh, um, comments that one of the customers here earlier today shared talked about being able to really transform folks, if they want to, from being order takers mm -hmm. to automating a lot of that so they can yeah. spend more time with customers For and sure. suppliers and change the conversations, yeah. right? Um, and that's that really, and from what I heard, that was a perfect way of kind of um, talking about the massive opportunities we have of changing business and how it's done. Yeah, huh? I agree. Um, especially for our people, which is there anything better to do than improve our people's days, yeah. right? No one wants to spend time taking orders or placing orders. They just want that done. That's right. Yeah. And you'll be tracking these AI-driven mm -hmm. tools as they get out in the market and they start making an impact and we'll have yeah. to have you back and we'll get Amy's score on each of them. How's that sound? <laughs> Happy to do that. Um, okay, so what is next for you, Amy Fong? What is next? Um, so I, since we are covering tech and we're covering services, there's a lot happening in that space in the big picture of the world, right? Services and tech are really converging. Your service providers are automating a lot of what their people do. Um, the tech is getting embedded into everything that you, you buy and everything you use, right? Um, I think from just a, when I think about just the, the sourcing and supply chain area that I cover, We've been covering Agentic quite a bit lately, um, doing some ROI comparisons. I think that next year is gonna be all about the value of the tech, mm -hmm. right? Um, it should always be about the value of the tech, but let's be real, the last couple of years, we've just had to experiment a lot. Right. Agents are relatively new, but now that some agents have been in place for six to eight months, you know, you can start to see and, and look at where are they saving time, where are they saving money? And I think that's gonna be a really interesting piece to be, you know, researching in 2026. Yes. So I'm excited about that. All these experimentations are begatting 
new ideas exactly. or we're getting more impact and, yeah. and who knows, I was it's talking, fun. it is fun. But you know, uh, one of the big things we've been talking about is as humans, you know, we've got a blind, we've got a big blind spot. Some of us do, I got a massive blind spot, but we also are putting how we understand AI today mm -hmm. through how we're using it today. Yeah, we've yeah. got some, some visionaries exactly. out there, but two, yeah. three years from now, yeah. oh my gosh, I wonder what we're not even thinking about the applications today, yeah. right? Yeah, it's really, it's really interesting to see it evolve. I mean, we know it all by default, treat AI like a Google search, right? And uh, sorry, should I not say the G word here? <laughs> <laughs> but, I don't know. We'll, we're gonna find out. That. But, um, <laughs> but you know, we would by default, we would just search it like the internet. Yeah. And there's so much more you can do. And once you start really experimenting and seeing, you know, and even thinking about how you can you can make your life better, you can make your day better, your work better, you and know, your changing your business process, yes. right? Yeah. At the individual level, the, you know, we kind of look at it, even in our own firm, the individual level, the organizational level, and then kind of the broader across the whole, you know, firm, your team and then yes. your, your, your company. Um, it's, there's so much potential there. Tons, tons. Um, okay, Amy Fong, partner, with Everest Group, how can folks track you down when you're not in Morocco and you're not you know, enjoying I'm all, all over, the... but I'm always online. Right, um, there you go. Yeah, so uh, I'm on LinkedIn, I'm on LinkedIn a lot. I do post, uh, if you follow me on there, I post a lot of our research and we do a lot of webinars and things like that too. So Wonderful. Um, some you know, ways to kind of find me on there, track me on there, uh, and then obviously our website as well. Okay, and that's EverestGRP.com. That is correct. Okay. Everest Group, GRP, yeah, Everest GRP. Yes, yes. and you're, you've committed to bringing back the Sherpa's blog, is that right? Uh, you know, we're getting you on the record using here. the word Sherpa a lot, Yes. because I really think that that kind of, you know, partnering through it, how do we get through the journey is, is important. Right yes, now. it really is. Trusted Sherpas, we need more. Yes, exactly. Um, Amy Fong, partner with Everest Group. Uh, Amy, thank you so much for being here today. Of course, this was fun. It was thank fun. Thank you. Folks, stick around as we continue our coverage of Amazon Reshape 2025 here in gorgeous Seattle. You can check it all out at supplychainnow.com. Stick around.